Guess where I am? Hey everybody, Jen here with The Sewing Report. Right now, I am in the parking lot at Joann's. I've been seeing all of your reports about what's happening on the ground at stores, and I needed to see firsthand what is really going on at Joann Fabrics. I am in a shopping center. This is a very busy, popular suburban area. This is the same store I was at a few months ago, and it was a newly remodeled store, very nice inside. It's Saturday around noon. I imagine this is probably one of their busiest times. So we're going to go inside and see what exactly is happening. And yes, I am wearing a fanny pack. Oh yeah. It's a few hours later and obviously I'm at home and I want to talk about what I saw today at the store compared to the last time I was there and compared to what some of you are saying is happening at your stores. I'm not exactly sure what the square footage of this particular location is, but it's a very large store in a rather popular shopping center. There's a mall nearby, there's tons of restaurants, and there's a lot of people that live in this suburban neighborhood. Last time I was there, it was after Christmas and the whole front of the store had been dedicated to storage stuff, you know, I guess like get organized for the new year. This time it was all Halloween and fall stuff, tons and tons of it. And it was already marked off like 50% off, 60% off. When I went after the holidays, there was this bin outside with a bunch of like Christmas pillows that were like 70% off. This time there were already, it's not even Halloween and it's barely fall, I think. And there were already some like fall pillows outside marked off 60%. I noticed in the backdrop of my stand up on camera, there were rows and rows of shopping carts in the background in the store. And I looked through my footage that I shot today and the, all those carts are gone. Now I did see some people with carts in the store. There wasn't like this cart section at the front of the store like there was when I went a few months ago. For real, I actually took notes on how many employees I saw there because some of you are saying that your store might have like two or three employees. And I actually saw something very different. So I saw at least nine Joanne employees and at least two to three that appeared to be working for Husqvarna Viking, the sewing machines, and maybe the Ditto pattern projector. I did see a little Ditto sewing pattern projector or demo area, but here's the thing. There were people manning that area and I couldn't really shoot footage without it being super obvious. So I didn't shoot that part, but it was kind of interesting to see that up close. So the Joanne employees that I saw firsthand with my own eyes, and there may have been more that I didn't see, but this is, I was actually counting and I took some notes. I saw four people at the register when I walked in. I saw three manning the cut bar. There was one person that seemed to be a managerial type. And lo and behold, there was actually somebody working at the custom framing department. I know it's not a ghost town. They seem to be helping a customer, I guess, getting a custom frame. So it's not like an urban myth or an urban legend. I guess some people actually do use the custom framing department. Oh, and you know what? I forgot. I think I actually saw another one. There was one person that appeared to be doing some sort of like inventory stuff. She was walking around. She had like the gun to like scan stuff or whatever. And she also was wearing like one of those headset walkie talkie things. So I think I might have seen 10 Joanne employees. Now I was there Saturday around 12.15 to like 1.45-ish. So yeah, I saw at least 10 employees there while I was, you know, just perusing the store. It was like moderately busy. I wouldn't say it was super busy, especially for a Saturday. I actually didn't think it was that like hectic in there. I would say there were at least, I don't know, I'm, I'm not like good at guessing how many people are in the store. At least 30 people in there at any given point in time. Obviously people are coming and going. The line didn't look super terrible. Sometimes it was longer than others. Probably the fastest wait time I saw looked to be around like five minutes. 
At one point, there did seem to be more people in line. The lines at this store have like the, you know, like the Corral thing, very much like a TJ Maxx or something. And then as you're going through the line, there's all those little tchotchkes they want you to buy, like stationery or like phone accessories or whatever, which I don't really understand why they sell that stuff. At one point, the line did look like it was a little bit longer, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. But I saw at least four people working the checkout registers. My experience was a little bit different than what some of you are reporting seeing, and I just want to be fair and accurate with this. The things I'm going to point out that I saw about the store, we have to remember that you have to set people up for success. And from what I'm hearing, if this store is experiencing a decrease in labor hours or how many people they can employ per week or whatever, then that's not really setting them up for success. That's setting them up for failure. So I do want to be very fair about that. I'm also going to be blurring out any faces because I don't want their obviously for their privacy reasons. And officially, I'm sure Joanne's has some sort of no filming policy in the store. Again, a lot of people don't follow that rule. I understand I'm taking a risk and who knows, maybe I would get like banned for life from the store. I have no idea, but I do wanna be respectful to the employees and I'm not going to be showing them, but I was really trying to pay attention to what was going on, who was working there and what everyone was doing. There were at least three people at the cut bar and I saw this manager guy, he was carrying inventory around. He was actually helping out at the cut bar. So he seemed to be a pretty decent employee from what I could tell. Quite honestly, if I didn't already know there were problems up top with Joanne Corporate, as a customer on the ground in the store, I actually might not really notice anything amiss about my store experience. So the one maybe telltale thing I did see throughout the entire store was there was merchandise that seemed to be like unpacked or not like displayed all over the store. I tried to get some footage. There were a bunch of like empty racks. I also saw a lot of those employee metal ladders everywhere. So I saw quite a few of those, but I noticed kind of a theme and I was looking at my old vlog to compare and there was a little bit of that going on when I went a few months ago, but not nearly as much as this time. I saw boxes and boxes of merchandise. I saw mer a lot of merchandise that was sort of in these plastic tubs that said like Joanne, property of Joann's. And when I looked in the bins, some of them were like real random. Like it wasn't like it was all one item, but sometimes there was just like a bunch of rando stuff just sort of stuffed in there. So it kind of looks like inventory. I don't know if they're moving it in or moving it out, but a lot of it looked like merchandise that had been unloaded from the truck, but they had not put up and displayed. I also noticed that there were quite a few, probably more than before, of shelves or racks that were empty or kind of near empty that hadn't been restocked yet. I don't know if that has something to do. I saw some employees on the Joanne subreddit. By the way, shout out to r slash Joanne Fabrics. Really appreciate everything you guys are sharing there. But people were saying they have to do these like planograms. I guess those are like how you just display stuff in, you know, on the shelves or on the display stands, whatever. That's what it seems like. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong, but I noticed a lot of merchandise that was not yet put away. It was sort of like in various staging areas, boxes on the floor. I saw there was one area in the middle that looked like it was like a, supposed to be some sort of like classroom area. And I don't even remember it from the last time. That area was probably looked like the most like what is going on here. And there was a bunch of rando merch. I also noticed there were more racks that said like store-wide clearance with like a bunch of really rando stuff in there. So that was kind of interesting too. But I think the thing I'm noticing as a customer at Joann's is that, okay, first of all, I think there was way too much space in the store dedicated to that seasonal decor stuff, like the hand towels with embroidery on it with like the coffee mugs. They had so much Halloween decor. Like do people really buy that much Halloween decor? There was also Christmas stuff already. And I noticed every time I go into a Joann's, no matter what time of the year it is, there's Christmas stuff there. It's September. I just really want to know, are people buying Christmas stuff now? I mean, I'm not really in the seasonal mood myself. And the Christmas stuff was already marked down 50% already too. Like there were a bunch of Christmas ornaments. There were Christmas decorations. I feel like there is just so much of a mishmash of different types of merchandise. I, as a customer, felt kind of confused, especially the Christmas stuff. I'm like, it's September. I don't think anyone is really looking to 
for like ornaments right now. And even Halloween stuff. I don't really buy Halloween stuff, but there was like way too much of it and it was already marked down 50 or 60% and I'm just like, for me, I think it's a little overwhelming and it was just kind of confusing. So I think that's sort of one of the problems. And again, I'm sure it's some corporate buyer that's deciding what type of stuff is being sold in the stores. But in my opinion, a lot of that stuff just doesn't make any sense. I was kind of trying to look for stuff like that. I mean, they've got like a, they have a kid section. They've got like kids toys. They have kids crafts, which totally makes sense. But some of the toys and other little like ran, you know, random stuff just, I was like, do they really need to be selling that? And then if it doesn't sell, one, they're holding the inventory and they've already spent the money to buy the inventory. So if it doesn't sell, you're not really making any money on it. Near the checkout area where they've got the corrals with aisles of more stuff you can buy. That was some of like the most WTF stuff to. I did see one Caboodles cosmetics case there, solo. And there was another thing that was like, I was like, why do they sell this? It was like a styrofoam head and it was like Halloween decoration. I think it was supposed to be like Frankenstein or something. I'm not really sure, but it was like next to the Caboodles, which just made no sense. They also had like Halloween candles, glue, you know, gum. I'm like, what? next to the Beanie Babies. It's just like turning into too much of like an everything store when it's really supposed to be like, like sewing crafts, you know, creative stuff, baking stuff. But a lot of the merchandise, I just, I, I just am very confused by it and I just don't get it. But the Frankenstein styrofoam head like really took the cake. So that one was on sale. I think it was like 30 or 50% off. The retail price on it was $12.99. $12.99 for a piece of styrofoam. I was like, who's, it's just one of those items where I'm like, who is buying this? And there were two of them. Clearly they had not sold. I just want to know, even at 50% off, so say it's like $6.50, are you going to spend $6.50 on a little styrofoam Frankenstein head? Not even like a Frankenstein figurine, but a Frankenstein head. Who's making these decisions up top? I really want to know. They also had a lot of skeletons, like a lot of skeleton decor. And I don't know, I just don't, not really my thing. Are people really buying that many skeleton figurines? Like they were freaking everywhere. There was so much Halloween stuff. And that's the thing, if you're buying Halloween stuff, you know, you might get it one year. You don't, who needs to buy Halloween decor every single year? I don't think that many people. I just don't know how much of a market there is for some of this stuff. Right when you walk in, there is a sign in the window advertising that Joanne's is hiring for part-time positions. And then when you get in, there's another display. There is a skeleton wearing a little Joanne apron, also advertising that they're hiring part-time for the holidays. So I thought that was kind of interesting in light of everything that's going on. For a Saturday, the cut bar didn't seem too insane. I saw maybe like six to seven people waiting and they had this little system where you kind of wait your turn. And there was like an electric jumbotron thing where you were kind of waiting and then and at least you know you can kind of walk around the store until your name is called and you can kind of see where you stood. So I thought that seemed to work and I saw at least like three people, at least two to three people at any given time working the cut bar. And my store is renovated so it did look very nice. Again there were some areas of the store that were a little bit disheveled but again knowing what these people are going through and knowing what's happening to the stores I feel like it makes a lot more understandable and it kind of gives me the appearance that they're trying to do. It's like they're trying to do the best they can you know it's like being on the Titanic as it's sinking you know you're just trying to keep it together but you kind of know it's a mess everyone I saw seemed to be pitching in doing their part helping each other out everybody was pleasant nothing crazy there was no drama at this location I didn't see anyone like rage quit or anything now, I did go in the bathroom by the way because I have to use the bathroom everywhere I go because that's just me nothing really big to complain about in the restrooms I would give it a six maybe a 6.5 it wasn't gross or anything perfectly usable. There were some paper towels and toilet paper on the floor, but I mean, you could say that about a lot of public restrooms, to be fair, the paper towels were kind of overflowing the trash, so that probably needed to be taken up. But again, not a terrible experience. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like the best restroom in the world, but I was just trying to notice some of the little things. The floral department, the floors in there were like, there was a little bit of like stuff on the floor. But again, if you're understanding that these people don't have enough employees to do 
everything. It really just makes a lot of sense. For some reason, they had one of those big industrial fans going on in the floral department. I have no idea why, but it was just there and it was just blown air. I tried to look at things like the light fixtures. I didn't see anything majorly wrong from a facilities angle. There was air conditioning in this location and I'm in Florida. So if there was no AC, I would definitely notice. All the lights seemed to be on and everything. When I walked through the fabric department, it actually seemed to be some of the stuff I saw the last time I was there, but they had some new stuff towards the front of the store. There was this really nice Badgley Mishka display. And I guess now they're selling branded Badgley Mishka like special occasion fabric. They also had some kind of cute little accessories like earrings or like headpieces and stuff. So definitely catering towards like the wedding formal wear type of customers. They had a lot of Halloween fabrics, stuff for cosplay. I did notice all of the novelty fleece prints. They had a lot of that. I would say this about the fabric though. A lot of it seems like super taste specific. Some of the prints and some of the fabrics, I would say don't really have like a wide appeal. It's like this is maybe for like two people. So I'm kind of wondering how the fabric sells because it is like very, very, very niche fabric and it's not stuff that everybody would like. It's like, oh, here's some purple faux fur or something, you know, that sort of thing. Very specific licensed character fabric. And they had like University of Florida fabric, Florida State University fabric. Again, tons and tons of fleece. I did notice they had some like athleisure wear type fabric. I tried to kind of see what they have. Some of the bolts were like kind of like out of place or whatever. Just judging between the last time I was there and this time, there were some small differences. But again, if I'm a customer going in and I have no idea what's going on with Joanne Corporate. I probably wouldn't really notice anything, to be honest with you. I would just be like, okay, cool. Overall, I am really glad I got to check out my local store in person to see for myself what is going on there. And I, I gotta say, from my point of view, again, this is one of the renovated stores and it is in a very, very popular area. So I don't know if that makes a difference. There were some pretty minor things I could call attention to, but nothing super insane. But I don't know, you might not agree. Let me know in the comments, what did you think about this store? Do you think this is adequate? Would you, do you feel like there are some problems with the store or do you feel like everything was totally cool. But let me know what you think down below in the comments and what is your local Joanne store? What's the state of the Joanne store if you've been to one recently? Let me know. I'm Jen with the Sewing Report investigating Joanne fabrics. See you again in the next video and remember whatever you're doing make it fun.